I just got a copy of this actually, and I think it's quite interesting. And it's also all true, because I remember most of this growing up, having been born about 12, 13 years before these incidents started. This is titled, World War III started 31 years ago in 1979. You really do not think of this until it is all put together for you. Then it's an eye-opener. Be sure to read, or listen to me in this case. Historians will call this the 30-year war, the 35, or the 40-year world. But World War III started in 1979. This is not very long, but very informative. You have to read the catalog of events in this brief piece and ask yourself how anyone can take the position that all we have to do is bring our troops home from Iraq and Afghanistan and sit back, reset the snooze alarm, go back to sleep, and no one will ever bother us again. In case you missed it, World War III began in November 1979. That alarm has been ringing for 31 years. U.S. Navy Captain Oe Met is the Executive Officer of Naval Air Station Pensacola, Florida. This is a copy of the speech he gave last month at the base. And our military needs more officers like this, I feel. It is an accurate account of why we are in so much trouble today and why this action is so necessary. America needs to wake up. That's what we think we heard on the 11th of September 2001 when more than 3,000 Americans were killed. And maybe it was, but I think it should have been a get out of bed, in fact. I think the alarm clock has been buzzing since 1979 and we have continued to hit the snooze button and roll over for a few more minutes of peaceful sleep since then even. It was a cool fall day in November 1979 in a country going through a religious and political upheaval when a group of Iranian students attacked and seized the American embassy in Tehran. This seizure was an outright attack on American soil. It was an attack that held the world's most powerful country hostage and paralyzed the presidency. The attack on the sovereign U.S. Embassy set the stage for events to follow for the next 31 years. America was still ruling from the aftermath of the Vietnam experience and had a serious threat from the Soviet Union when then President Jimmy Carter had to do something. He chose to conduct a clandestine raid in the desert. The ill-fated mission ended in ruin, but stood as a symbol of America's inability to deal with terrorism. America's military had been decimated and downsized, bright size since the end of the Vietnam War. A poorly trained, poorly equipped, and poorly organized military was called on to execute a complex mission that was doomed from the start. Shortly after the Tehran experience, Americans began to be kidnapped and killed throughout the Middle East. America could do little to protect her citizens living and working aboard. The attacks against U.S. soil continued. In April of 1983, a large vehicle pack of high explosives was driven into the U.S. Embassy compound in Beirut. When it exploded, it killed 63 people. The alarm went off again and America hit the snooze button once more. And just six short months later in 1983, a large truck heavily laden down with over 2,500 pounds of TNT smashed through the main gate at the U.S. Marine Corps headquarters in Beirut, and 241 U.S. servicemen were killed. America mourns her dead and hit the snooze button once more. Two months later, in December 1983, another truck loaded with explosives is driven into the U.S. Embassy in Kuwait, and America continues her slumber. The following year, in September 1984, another van was driven into the gate of the U.S. Embassy in Beirut, and America slept again. Soon the terrorism spreads to Europe. In April 1985, a bomb explodes in a restaurant frequented by U.S. soldiers in Madrid, Spain. Then in August 1985, a Volkswagen loaded with explosives is driven into the main gate of the U.S. Air Force Base at Rob, Maine. 22 are killed and the snooze alarm is buzzing louder and louder as U.S. interests are continually attacked. 59 days later in 1985, a cruise ship, the Chile Loro, is hijacked and we watched as an American in a wheelchair is singled out of the passenger list and is executed. 
a terrorist then shift their tactics to bombing civilian airlines when they bombed TWA Flight 840 in April of 1986 that killed four and the most tragic bombing, Pam Am Flight 133 over Lockerbie, Scotland in 1988 killing another 259. The wake-up alarm is getting louder and louder. The terrorists decide to bring the fight to America. In January 1993, two CIA agents are shot and killed as they enter CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia. The following month, February 1993, a group of terrorists are arrested after a rented van packed with explosives is driven into the underground parking garage of the World Trade Center in New York City. Six people are killed and over a thousand are injured. Still, this is a crime, not an act of war. The snooze alarm is depressed once again. Then in November 1995, a car bomb explodes at a U.S. military complex in Rada, Saudi Arabia, killing seven servicemen and women. A few months later, in June of 1996, another truck bomb explodes only 35 yards from the U.S. military compound in Dharan, Saudi Arabia. It destroys the Cobra Towers, a U.S. Air Force barracks, killing 19 and injuring over 500. The terrorists are getting braver and smarter as they see that America does not respond decisively. They move to coordinate their attacks in a simultaneous attack on two U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania. These attacks were planned with precision. They killed 224. America responds with a cruise missile attack and goes back to sleep. The U.S. coal was docked in the port of Aden, Yemen for refueling on 12th of October 2000 when a small craft pulled alongside the ship and exploding, killing 16 U.S. Navy sailors. Attacking a U.S. warship is an act of war, but we sent the FBI to investigate the crime and went back to sleep again. And of course you know the events of 11 September 2011. Most Americans think this was the first attack against U.S. soil or in America. How wrong they are and you all are. America has been under a constant attack since 1979 and we choose to hit the snooze alarm and roll over and go back to sleep. In the news lately we have seen lots of finger pointing for every high official in government over what they knew and what they didn't know. But if you read the papers and paid a little attention, I think you can see exactly what they knew. You don't have to be an FBI or CIA agent or on the National Security Council to see the pattern that's been developing since 1979. I think we have been in a war for the past 31 years and it will continue until we as a people decide enough is enough. America needs to get out of bed and act decisively now. America has been changed forever. We have to be ready to pay the price and make the sacrifice to ensure our way of life continues. We cannot afford to keep hitting the snooze button again and again and again and roll over and go back to sleep. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, Admiral Yamamoto said, It seems all we have done is awaken a sleeping giant. This is the message we need to disseminate to terrorists around the world. This is not a political thing to be hashed out over an election year. This is an American thing. This is about our freedom and the freedom of our children in years to come. If you believe in this, please forward it to as many people as you can, especially the young people and all those who doze off in history class and seem so quick to protest such a necessary military action. If you don't believe this, just delete it and go back to sleep. Because I lived and I remember seeing all the stuff in the papers growing up in this country. And it always upset me. Not, not, yes, because it happened, but also because people were re never really punished. Thank you and have a good day.